Mike wishes he could go back in time to when he was 17 and change his life because he is unhappy with how it has developed. When he awakens one morning, his wish has come true. The scene opens with Michael O'Donnell practicing his basketball shots prior to a big game. Michael is the standout of his high school basketball team in 1989, and a college scout is waiting in the stands to see his championship game and offer him a scholarship if he performs well. His coach gives him a hint of a full ride to college, if he does well, and Michael does not think too much about it, trusting his talent to speak for itself. He spots his girlfriend, Scarlett, by the bleachers, just before the game begins. Scarlett does not seem like her usual self. She fidgets and looks nervous. Mike walks up to her to chat before the game. She encourages him by wishing him good luck, and feigns a smile. Mike notes something is not right, but does not say anything at that moment. When she starts to act quite distressed, Michael blows her a kiss before approaching her. She makes an effort to act as though everything is fine, before finally telling him she is expecting. This distracts Michael from the big game. He is confused and disoriented, and no amount of yelling from his coach on the sidelines can make him snap out of it. When the game begins, he is preoccupied with Scarlett. Everything becomes a blur. Michael looks over to his coach, yelling at him to snap out of it. He looks towards the bleachers to see the college scout scribbling notes with a disappointed frown on his face. From the corner of his eye, he watches Scarlett leave the game and run out of the gymnasium. Michael cannot bring himself to go ahead with the game. He is too distracted and throws the ball away before walking away from the game to go after her in the hallway. Michael stops her from talking, telling her that she and their baby are his future and that is what he wants in his life. Scarlett is surprised to see Michael throwing away his future for her and their baby. She tries to talk him out of it, saying that he should not give up on his dreams for her sake, when he cuts her off with an intimate moment. Michael gives up on the game and the scholarship to wed her. In ecstasy, he swings the love of his life around in his arms as the two rejoice. Mike's life is a disaster 20 years later. His high school best buddy Ned Gold, now a nerdy billionaire software engineer, took him in when Scarlett left him, forcing him to move in with them. However, Ned's children, Maggie and Alex, are aloof and don't want anything to do with him. Over a lousy bowl of cereal for breakfast, Mike discusses the bright side of what is happening in his life. Despite his crippling marriage, Mike is expecting a promotion at work, which seemingly is the only good thing that he has to look forward to. However, when his employer rejects him for a promotion at work in favor of a lady the boss likes, but is significantly less qualified, Mike loses it and is dismissed. He is now out of a job and struggling to hold his family together. On the way home, he makes a pit stop at his former high school, where he notices his 1989 team photo in the display and thinks back on the life he wasted. Back then, Mike had it all. The high school was his kingdom, and he ruled over it gloriously. Then he runs into an enigmatic janitor, who asks him if he genuinely wishes he was a teenager once more, and he agrees. The janitor disappears as the bell rings, and crowds of students fill the hallway. Mike spots his daughter in the crowd, and asks her if she and her brother would like to go with him for ice cream. The three have a very disconnected conversation, where Mike attempts to ask his kids about what is new in their lives. He realizes how distant his children have become, and does not know how he can fix things. He drops them back home, and walks in on Scarlet shredding his belongings in the backyard of their house. This depicts clearly how broken their marriage has become over the years. In the 20 years that Mike and Scarlett have been married, he seems to have blamed her for not being able to pursue his dreams and goals in life. Mike seems to have victimized himself by getting married too soon, and becoming a father too soon, which got in the way of a better life than he could have had. Scarlett is pushing for a divorce and tells Mike the date for the court hearing. Frustrated with the finality of ending their relationship, Mike leaves her to continue shredding objects, now with a wave of profound anger. On the way home after dropping his children off at their mom's, he spots the same man he saw at school, standing over the bridge as if ready to jump off. Mike attempts to stop the janitor, who appears to be about to fall off a bridge, but the janitor vanishes unexpectedly. It is pouring rain as Mike runs over to the edge of the bridge to see if he can find the janitor. But instead, he observes a strange whirlpool form in the water below, with his 17-year-old self reaching out to him. After being taken aback, Mike loses his balance and plunges into the river, where he is magically changed back to age 17. In the following scene, Mike arrives at Ned's home coated in mud. Mike notices his reflection in the mirror as he rinses off in Ned's shower. His shocked face, which is 17 years old, is staring back at him. Mike screams in disbelief. Ned overhears Mike's screams and mistakes him for an intruder. He has multiple fictional relics decorating his house, and after picking his collectible of choice to serve as a weapon, Ned chases Mike around the house. Mike tries to convince him that it is his 17-year-old self, but does not understand how this all happened. As the two scurry around the house, Ned grabs a picture frame, raising it high to land a blow on Mike. In doing so, he notes the similarity between Mike in the picture and Mike in real life. Ned realizes that Mike is telling the truth and drops the frame on his head in shock. After persuading Ned of who he truly is, Mike thinks he's been given a chance to live his life a second time, but to do it right, to win the basketball scholarship, 
and attend college. He believes that to be his spiritual path and takes it as a second chance to live out the dreams he gave up on all those years ago. He re-enrolls in high school as Mark Gold, while living with Ned in his house filled with high-tech toys, all while Ned is posing as his father. Being a tech wizard, Ned successfully forges the necessary documents that Mike needs to get admission at the school. In the interview process, Ned meets his high school flame, Ms. Masterson, who is now the school principal. Mike, now enrolled in high school, marvels at how fit and healthy he feels and looks. His chubby body is replaced with toned muscles, and with Ned's finances and excellent fashion sense, Mike successfully grabs the attention of all the students at the school. Mike's children go to the same school he did, and he is surprised to see how much has changed since he was a student there. While he finds his way around his peers and classes, Mike receives a call from Scarlett, who is waiting for him to show up at court regarding the matters of custody. Mike has completely forgotten about that and excuses himself, claiming that he is out of town on urgent business. He overhears Scarlett's lawyer urging her to go for full custody, with Mike's current record of absences. Mike yells into the phone that Scarlett cannot take his children away from him, and asks her to trust him. He looks at Maggie walking into his class, when he tells Scarlett that he is a lot closer to his children than she thinks. Scarlett, unsurprised by his behavior, behavior hangs up. As Mike begins to integrate into school life, he learns that his son is being bullied and tormented by the cruel basketball captain Stan, who is dating his daughter and is solely interested in having intimate relations with her. He is shocked to realize the social standings of his children at school, and upon finding his son tied up with duct tape in the school bathroom, Mike resorts to helping his children out in any way he can. Over time, Mark comes to understand that the real reason he has been given another shot in life is so that he may help his kids and try to win Scarlet back. Mike becomes acquainted with his son Alex, and realizes that his son has tremendous basketball talent, and is an effortless three-point shooter. He works with Alex to improve his other skills in order to make the squad, and catch the eye of the girl of his dreams. Mike stands up to Stan for Alex, breaking the illusion about Stan in front of the whole school. He knows Stan's kind all too well, Stan is one of the popular guys at school who rule over everyone, but once they face the practical world, they are reduced to nothing. Stan is taken aback by Mike's boldness, and his way around a basketball. This further puts Mike under the spotlight in front of his two children. Alex begins to view Mike as a close friend, and Maggie looks at him as the odd new student, interfering in her relationship with Stan. Every day at Alex's residence, Mark and Alex work on shooting baskets together, and Alex appears to get better and better. The two are rehearsing one day when Scarlett, who has been drinking, returns home with her friend. When her son introduces her to Mark, Scarlett is struck by how closely her ex-husband resembles his new friend. She approaches him while still feeling a bit drunk, gives him a close inspection, and makes a strange touch to his face. Scarlett's friend Naomi, who Mike originally despises, assures Scarlett that she is still hung on her ex-husband, and the odd coincidental similarity she sees in Mark will go away once she meets someone new. Mark is offended by it, and reminds Naomi that Scarlett is still married, and it is not right to meet new people when she is still not entirely single. He walks away, pronouncing Naomi's name incorrectly as he usually does. Scarlett starts working with Mark to plant her backyard, in an effort to launch a landscaping company. He is amazed by her creativity as she explains how she wants to design her backyard. He has a newfound respect for her abilities, yet he frequently approaches or makes physical contact with her, in ways she feels are improper for an adult lady, and an adolescent boy. Eventually, the backyard is completed, and Scarlett shows it to Alex and Mark, both speechless as they look at the piece of art. While commenting on the feat, Mark accidentally calls her Scar, which catches her attention. Scarlett has only had her ex-husband call her that. Mark quickly recovers and changes the topic of the conversation, and Scarlett tells him that she has a date to get ready for that night. Mark is a bit surprised but hides it, smiling after Scarlett as she leaves to get ready. Later, as she waits for her date to arrive, Mark walks in on her, practicing her dancing moves in front of the mirror. She and her date are going dancing. Mark asks Scarlett to teach him a few of her signature steps. He picks a song and plays it on the stereo. His choice of song surprises Scarlett, since it is the same one that she and her ex-husband danced to at their wedding. The two dance along to the music when Alex walks in on them, catching them in an awkward moment. Scarlett's date has arrived. As he watches Scarlett leave, Maggie, Mike's daughter, slips past Mark in the doorway to get in a car with blaring music. There is a party at one of the clubs, and with Maggie in danger of being in inappropriate company, Mark grabs Alex and heads over to the party. At the club, Mark urges Alex to talk to the girl he has a crush on, and heads over to deal with Maggie. Stan is a highly unsuitable boy for her, and an even worse influence. She deserves better than him, and Mark wants her to realize that before she ruins her life. He is disappointed to know that Maggie is willing to sacrifice her admission at a great university to go to community college, so she can be close to Stan, as he works a mediocre job. 
He tries to knock some sense into her, and his fatherly instincts take over. Mark tells her that he is forbidding Maggie to meet Stan again, and that he would not let her waste her life for a guy with no future. Maggie is outraged, claiming that Mark is not her father, and demands to know why she should listen to anything he is saying. She storms off, and Mark is left behind, frustrated with his daughter's choices. He locates Alex, who somehow managed to catch up on fire, after having a miserable encounter with his crush. Another basketball game follows. Although Mark contributes significantly to the basketball team's comeback victory, Alex hits the game-winning three-pointer. The team goes for the win. Meanwhile, Ned has been charmed with Jane, the high school principal, ever since the day he enrolled his kid in her class, but his nerdy attempts to win her over have only served to repulse her. Finally, she agrees to join him for dinner, the same night that Mark has announced a party at his house, to celebrate the victory in the game, in exchange for him purchasing laptops for every kid in the school. Meanwhile, Mark looks around for Maggie after the game, to find her sobbing in the empty stands overlooking the school sports field. She tells him that Stan broke up with her when she refused to be intimate with him after the game. Mark is devastated to see his daughter heartbroken and consoles her. He promises her that one day she'll meet a man who will value her in the manner she deserves, but he is horrified to learn that Maggie is beginning to believe that man to be him. He brushes her away as she leans into him, and changes the topic by bringing up the party that he is hosting. Maggie happily agrees that she will be there. Mark only notifies a select few people about the party, but the entire school shows up and texts everyone about it. He is flustered with the kids playing around with Ned's prize collectibles, and does not know how to get the chaos under control. Ned, on the other hand, is facing his own set of struggles. Up until he finally reveals that he's always been a loser with women, Ned's romantic dinner with Jane is going nowhere. Actually, he's just a geek who loves the Lord of the Rings. She gives him a gentle smile and begins conversing with him in Elvish, one of the languages from the Lord of the Rings, and he discovers that she is also a Lord of the Rings enthusiast. Ned and Jane return to his house for romance after having a sensuous talk in Elvish, but hundreds of children are running around everywhere because Mark's celebration has gotten out of hand. In the meantime, Mark walks in on Stan, trying to get back together with Maggie. Stan is drunk and apologetic, and does not heed Maggie's words when she tells him that they are done and that she is with someone else. Mark tells Stan to go home, willing to involve the police if need be. But a crude comment from Stan about Maggie makes Mark lose his temper. He throws a punch but misses and blacks out as Stan hits him square in the face. Mark then wakes up in one of the rooms at Ned's house with the party still going on. To his horror, he finds Maggie dressed provocatively, trying to be intimate with him. He informs her that he secretly loves someone else and cannot commit to her. Maggie accepts his reasons, her ego slightly bruised by his rejection. As Mark walks out of the room, he runs into Scarlett, who is looking for Alex. Mark walks her over to the spot where Alex and his crush are sharing a sweet, intimate moment. He tells Scarlett that she has been a great mother, and that Maggie and Alex are great kids. Scarlett thanks him warmly, and Mark instinctively leans in towards her, not being able to help his intense love for her. Taken aback by Mark's actions, Scarlett pulls away, appalled at the audacity of a supposedly 17-year-old high school boy. She walks away, furious. Her children have also witnessed this odd incident and are equally shocked. Mark follows Scarlett while claiming that he is her husband, and the father of her children. Scarlett thinks he has lost his mind and slaps him before running away. Maggie and her friends are shocked to witness the incident and assume that Mark is inappropriately in love with her mother, having confessed his feelings for a secret someone to Maggie earlier. Simultaneously, Jane calls off the party, utilizing her position as the school principal. As the students leave the house, Jane turns to Ned, telling him this is the reason why she does not get involved with the parents of her students. She leaves, with Ned and Mark realizing that everything has gone wrong. Ned takes a look at his plundered house and lands several blows on Mark's face, humorously justifying each one, before pulling him in a hug as consolation for the unfortunate turn of events. Mark feels like he has lost everything, and resorts to practicing basketball in the front yard of Ned's house, making his decision to pursue his college education. Ned sincerely feels sorry for Mark. The next morning, as they clean up the chaos from the party, Ned informs Mark that the hearing for Mike O'Donnell's final divorce decree with Scarlett is in 20 minutes. Mark realizes that he still cannot give up on his spiritual path. Perhaps this is the moment he went back in time to fix. Mark tells Ned that he needs to fix his mess, and they rush to the courtroom. When they reach, Mark pleads with the judge to hear him out. Mark claims that he is there to convey a letter that Mike has written to his wife. Ned is acting as Mike's attorney, but they are ordered to leave. Scarlett agrees to hear the letter, and when Mark reads it to her, she is astounded by the emotional force of his voice, and the details about their romance that only her husband could have known. Mark reads the letter to Scarlett, telling her about the first day they met in high school. He describes the t-shirt she was wearing, along with minor details that only Mike would have remembered. Mark cannot hold back his tears, as he reads out what Scarlett means to him in the letter. His tears and his emotions touch Scarlett's heart, sending her into an unbelievable suspicion that perhaps this really is her husband from the past. Mark ends by adding that because he loves her so much, and can tell that she no longer wants him in her life, he is happy to let her go. 
He looks scarlet in the eyes and smiles weakly. Turning around, he drops the letter on a seat and walks out of the courtroom, leaving Scarlet to contemplate if she really wants to go ahead with the divorce or not. Scarlet picks up the alleged note after Mark has finished speaking, and has been ordered to leave the courtroom, and learns it is actually simply a piece of paper with directions to the courthouse. Though Mark wasn't even reading a letter, he somehow remembered all he had told her. She is stunned, not able to comprehend if Mark really is her husband, Mike. She requests a delay in the divorce judgment, now quite unsure of her decision to cut ties with Mark. Since getting the scholarship and attending college seem to be the only options left for Mark, he makes an effort to put Scarlet out of his mind, and focus on basketball. He believes everything really is lost, and is no longer thrilled by his prospects for college as he may have been 20 years ago. Meanwhile, in her high school yearbook, Scarlett notices that Mark doesn't just resemble her husband at age 17, he looks exactly the same. This partially confirms the crazy theory that Mark really is her ex-husband Mike. This realization dawns on her on the day of the championship game, when Mark and Alex are playing, and Maggie is cheerleading. Maggie then reminds Scarlett that she is responsible for providing transportation to the game, and Scarlett stays to observe. We see a playback of the same events from 1989 when Mike was competing for the championship, aiming to get a scholarship. The same coach tells him the potential good news of a free ride to college as the game kicks off. Mark notices Scarlett in the stands just before the game begins. In 1989, when he was competing in the same championship game, and noticed her standing behind the bleachers, Mike made a gesture similar to the one he uses while blowing her a kiss now. Scarlett eventually understands that Mark, who has miraculously turned 17 once again, is her husband. She is aware of all the reasons she loved him then and why she still does, but she also understands that she cannot possibly build a life with a 17-year-old guy. Just like he did in 1989, Mark sees Scarlett leaving, forgets about the game, and leaves. As he sprints down the hallway after Scarlett, he gives the ball to Alex and declares that this time, it is his turn. In the audience, we catch a glimpse of the enigmatic janitor grinning, and by the time Mark catches up to Scarlett, he is once more Mike O'Donnell as an adult. He does not stray away from his spiritual path, and finds himself in the exact moment where he and Scarlett started their new life together 20 years ago. Mike admits to Scarlett that he has messed up his marriage because he has been bitter toward her for the past 20 years, because she denied him the opportunity to attend college. However, he has since come to the realization that his family is the only thing that matters to him, and he begs for another chance. A few days later, Mike returns the key and collects his belongings from Ned's home. He discovers Ned and Jane in bed, each of them sporting elf ears. Since Jane has appointed Mike as the new coach of the high school basketball team, Mike thanks Ned for everything he's done, and Ned gives Mike a whistle for his new position as a parting gift. 